Hi and welcome. This is Jules Muller, founder and CEO of Chicks Connect, and we are super excited to welcome all of you that are on with us live, as well as those of you watching the replay for our Chicks Connect online social media summit. We are now privileged to have Shannon Hinderberger with us, and she is our Instagram expert and is going to be sharing amazing content. So make sure to have your paper and pens ready to go. And um, I'm just gonna turn it right on over to Shannon. She's gonna tell us a little bit about her background and then dive into some excellent content. Thanks, Jules. I'm really excited to be here today. Um, I love Chicks Connect. I have several of you as my clients, so it's, it's a lot of fun to uh, connect with the chicks and um, get uh, help you guys learn. It's my mission in life is to serve and teach people all about online marketing. And one thing I get asked a lot about a lot is Instagram. So today I'm going to cover um, Instagram basics, Instagram stories, and I'm going to do that live from my phone because Instagram changed everything in the back end, and I I am still getting a feel for it as well. So um, we're going to go through this together, um, and then we're going to talk about um, how to um, have some ha what hashtags are how to use them, and then also uh, which hashtags you should be using. Um, and then we'll talk about engaging on Instagram and the engagement tactics that I'm going to teach you, you can also use on Facebook and you can also use on LinkedIn and Twitter as well. So um, that's kind of what we're going to cover today. I will ask questions at the various ends of the section. So um, the first section is going to be Instagram basics and Instagram stories. So we'll cover questions um, at the end of that section, but put them in the chat as we go along so you don't forget. And then um, the, the next section will be about the hashtags and then we'll ask questions um, and answer then. And then in, when we do engagement, we'll do it at the end of there. So, uh, cause this is a lot of information and I'm gonna take some breaks so we can get this covered. So a little bit about me is you can follow me on Instagram at Shannon Lee Strategy. Um, I have over 20 years of online marketing experience. I have a broadcasting degree that I used for a whole nine months. Um, and then in 1998, I started working in um, content development uh, for web. And then about uh, 12 years ago, I started working in the social media uh, spectrum of things. Um, and then in 2017, I went on my own. Um, so I've been on my own almost three years. Um, I went on my own as a digital marketing strategist. I have a background in um, health, hospitality, and food and beverage. Um, so a lot of the folks that I work with um, are in those realms right now. Um, so I went on my own in 2017 as an online marketing strategist. So I work with small businesses in 2018. I launched one-on-one um, -on -one coaching where I will teach um, small business owners, particularly women. Um, usually the women I work with are over 30, over 35. Um, they know a little bit about social media, um, but they want to learn everything. Um, most of the times they don't have a budget to hire a strategist. So I developed a program that in 20 weeks teaches them how to do everything. Um, has to do for, at their website, um, email marketing, social media, and everything in between. I also launched a group program last year. Um, I have a couple chicks in that group program right now, and that program opens twice, uh, twice a year. If that's something you're interested in, uh, we can talk later about that. Um, I live in Bend, Oregon. I have two kids. Um, I enjoy the craft beer life, though recently I found that gluten and I don't get along, so that's been kind of sad. Um, I enjoy cooking and being outdoors, and I love live music. So these are the services that I do offer. Um, I work with small businesses and develop and execute their um, online marketing. I do the coaching, and then I also have the uh, group coaching as well. Um, and one of the things I'm very, 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 uh, I feel strongly about is you can't just do social media. You have to be um, doing um touching in other areas of the web as well. And your website is the most important online marketing tool you have. And so um, I really work with my coaching students and the businesses I work with 
to uh, really like hone in on your website, add content to your website, make sure your email marketing, building that list. And then social media is kind of comes out of all of those um, areas when it comes to online marketing. Um, I teach the three C's and I have to say that I have found um, that confidence plus consistency plus something else usually equals success. And in this case, um, confident, confidence, consistency, and content equal online marketing success. I'm not going to really talk about uh, content development today. Um, that's a, we could talk about that another time. Um, I teach this, this uh, way of developing content where you just basically get to know what your clients want and your customers want or your ideal clients want, and that is how you build content. But you'll hear me talking about my three C's um, if you follow me on Instagram, and I will allude to that a little bit in here as well. But today we're really gonna focus on Instagram and the neighborhoods of Instagram. <clears throat> There's actually five neighborhoods when it comes to Instagram. The one that's missing on here is direct messaging, and that is emerging as an area to be spending time. We're, we'll touch on that a little bit today, but these are the areas today uh, we will talk about. We will talk about the news feed, Instagram stories, we'll touch on live, and we'll touch on IGTV. And you guys were talking about live, going live in this last, um, Area. So I'll briefly touch on it, but IGTV is one that's emerging as um, kind of like the next YouTube, foot, but for portrait. So YouTube is usually horizontal and IGTV is portrait. There's a way to create um, videos uh, that are all one, you, cr you create them in one um, horizontal area and there's a program that you could take your videos in and chop them into the correct formats so you can repurpose them and it's called wave.video and I'll touch on that in a little bit. Here are some people to follow besides me. She was a coach for a little over a year. She's a great person to follow for Instagram tactical tips and trip tricks. And we're gonna go over a lot of tactical tips today. Digital marketer is a great place for inspiration and to learn the latest tips and tricks that are happening in the online space. And then Gary Vaynerchuk, um, though he's a guy, he's a great guy to follow and get inspired when it comes to content development. Um, he does say bad words though, just a little warning. If, um, so does Sue. So if you don't like the potty mouths, they may not be your cup of tea, but they offer great um, tactical advice when it comes to Instagram and content development. So here's kind of some stats. Um, Facebook has a billion users. I think it's 4 billion users. Um, Instagram is fast taking over Facebook's users. Um, I was at Social Media Marketing World last year, and Facebook and Instagram have been going like this. Facebook has kind of plateaued and started to come down when it comes to users, adding users, and Instagram is going this way. Um, I'm not saying Facebook is going away. I think Facebook is going to dominate for a long time, but Instagram is that happy touchy feely place where, where Facebook could be a little negative at times. Um, also Instagram has been adding some amazing tools like Instagram stories, which we're going to talk about that give you an opportunity to, um, record short videos that only stay up for 24 hours, AKA like Snapchat. Um, Young, there tend to be younger users on Instagram. That is actually, um, that 30 to 49 is actually growing bigger than the 18 to 29 age group. So if your ideal client falls within that 30 to 50 range, a good place to make sure you're hanging out is Instagram. Um, it's mostly female um, and everybody usually uses it on their phone. Um, desktop um, is the is a place that people do use it, so just be aware that um, a good majority of the users will be on their phones. Um, the average time spent per day is 15 minutes. Um, the average social media time spent every day um, is around 40 minutes. Um, I just saw a stat that that Instagram is inching into the Facebook time, and now people are spending about 17 minutes, and the rest is between um, the majority is still Facebook, but a little bit of Twitter and a little bit of LinkedIn. 
Um, I like to throw this stat in as well. Um, YouTube is not considered in the social media time. The average time somebody spends on YouTube is about 34 minutes outside of social networking. So YouTube is very important. Um, and though we're not talking about YouTube today, Instagram stories can kind of get you in practice for possibly doing longer videos. Okay. So here's some Instagram best practices. Um, you want to make sure that your profile is consistent across all social networks. So um, your profile on Instagram looks like this. Um, this was just from a couple months ago. Um, you have, I believe, 151 characters or 150 characters in the spot um, to uh, put your information in. You'll notice, though, that my name is not in the bold part. This bold part right here is searchable. So you can um, put whatever you would like that you want searched in there. Um, people don't usually find me as Shannon Hinderberger. They find me as Shannon Lee. So uh, at this time, I was testing out Online Marketing Bend, Oregon. I've now changed that. It now says um, Shannon, Shannon Lee Marketing Mentor. Um, this is searchable, and you can change it. Um, I put my name down there because a lot of times, People want to know what your name is. It now says Shannon Lee because I just go by my business name, which is Shannon Lee Strategy, which I didn't even tell you guys was my business name now that I think about it. So um, it's in my it's in my Instagram profile, so or Instagram handle. So I just assume you guys get that. So my business name is Shannon Lee Strategy. Um, there's a couple things I always suggest with Instagram. Um, there's two, there are three types of accounts now. I always suggest starting off with the business account. Um, it gives you capabilities such as, um, it gives you capabilities as insights. It gives you capabilities um, to tag other brands. Um, when you have a personal account, you don't get those capabilities. There's also what's called a creator account, and those are more for influencers. And right now, I'm actually testing a creator account to see uh, what I like and don't like about it. Um, the difference between a business account and a creator account are these two things. The business account will um, link to your Facebook and post to your Facebook. The creator account will link to your personal it's your personal Facebook page and your personal Facebook stories. Um, I prefer my stories from Instagram to go to Facebook stories on my personal side. I have way more um, people following my personal page than I do my business page. And I actually have been testing this for three months now and I have found that I'm gaining more business from it going to my Facebook personal page, which I, which a lot of people are, are kind of like stunned at that. So that's just a suggestion to test out those two types of accounts and see which one works for you. And it really depends on if you want it going to your Facebook page or your personal Facebook page. Right. So we'll get on to some more best practices. Um, you want to share quality content on a consistent basis that has a call to action. Um, quality content um, original content is different for everybody. Um, it's different for everyone. Um, and really what you want to do is you want to be asking your audience, um, asking these questions. And we're going to get to that in a little bit, like how you ask on Instagram, but a great place is just to go. I do this in Chicks Connect often, and I'm about ready to go ask again in Chicks Connect, um, what you're struggling with when it comes to, Content is probably what I will ask this time because I've been on a kick to really educate folks about content development and put it, making content uh, for your website that also goes on social media. So sharing quality content is different for everybody. It just depends on the, um, your audience and what they're struggling with and how you're going to solve that struggle. Don't be afraid to use motion. Um, I like to use uh, videos every Tuesday. I have a regular segment called Tip Tuesday. They used to be 60 minutes long, and now they are about three minutes long, and I put them on to IGTV, and they show up in my news feed. Um, boomerangs are a quick way uh, to get some motion in your Instagram feed and your Instagram stories. Um, Boomerang is an app inside of Instagram stories that I'll show you. You can also download it as a standalone app. 
And then Facebook has, um, I think it's uh, Facebook uh, Video Shop is the name of that app. Um, there's a stop, free stop motion app in there that you could use. Stop motion's a little tricky. It takes some time. If stop motion is something you're interested in, but watch some YouTube videos on how to do it. Um, with the Instagram feed videos, you only have 60 seconds. With Instagram TV, IGTV, I believe you have 10 minutes. Um, in there. So with photography as well, as you can see, I put a picture of my feed in here. Um, you want to have a good mix of, you want to have a good variety of items such as people, um, not always just a person's face, but hands, um, back of heads. You want to make sure you have good lighting, um, flat lays, if it's appropriate for your brand, are very key in photography that's on brand. Um, I wonder if we have um, personal branding, maybe Jules, something that we talk about down the road. Um, I get asked about personal branding a lot. And what does that mean? It just means like uh, putting pictures that are on brand for your brand. So for me, um, for being on brand would be this top left photo of working on a MacBook with some colorful pens and a cupcake because I like cupcakes. Um, this was a styled shoot that my local photographer did. Um, she basically came into my office and grabbed a bunch of my items and uh, put them in a box and we went to a different location and she shot them with them. We set up a mock, mock desk. Um, oops, I did not mean to go forward. Um, go back, there we go. Um, you'll notice in my feed that I use a variety of my brand colors that I will be wearing um, pink and navy because those are part of my brand colors as well. Um, the one thing I will say is don't always use the same type of photo and I'll show an example of that in a little bit. Um, for example, food bloggers will always use pictures of you know food on a flat looking down. Um, I always suggest to food bloggers that they take different angles of the food. They put, uh, they at least take pictures with people like with a hand and a fork, uh, just put some variety. Um, don't always put flat lays and make sure just variety is key. Um, if you're using graphics, you'll notice here that on, um, in my newsfeed that I have graphics that are similar to one another and using similar colors. Um, you wanna make your brand look consistent, um, not only on Instagram, but on all your other social networks as well. If you don't have one, there's a free tool called canva.com and canva.com will um, let you, uh, they have templates in there. You could pick colors and you could develop a brand uh, fairly easy using that app. Um, engagement, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this later on, but engage with your followers using more than five words. Um, it signals to Instagram that you really care and um, you'll see that, um, you know, somebody posted, they're totally confused, a lot of fronts, and I just made sure that I answered their question, um, and I use more than five words. Sometimes I will put a cute little emoji in there if I really don't have much to say, but I always really try to use more than five words when it comes to engagement. And we're going to go in a great detail on engagement at the end, and I often hand out all these things as well. So uh, one of the things that I get asked a lot is how do I gain followers? You want to gain followers naturally and in our the engagement tactics that we're going to talk about later on, I will give you tools to engage to get followers following you um, at a more natural pace. Um, I have worked with so many of my clients that have used loops or pods or services um, to gain um, to gain followers. You, you can go out now and hire somebody to do this for you, I suggest to not waste the money and do it yourself because sometimes you run the risk of getting banned and um, the algorithm also, uh, you'll get downgraded in the algorithm and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. Um, they call it, sometimes call it shadow banning um, if you use the loop tactics or the bot services to gain followers. So I just always encourage you to gain followers naturally and we'll go over some tactics on how to do that. Uh, you want to research and use relevant hashtag tags, and we're going to talk more about this down the road, but make sure you st stay away from hashtags that tell what you do. The exception to this is real, real estate agents, because 
people do uh, search things like bend real estate um, as a hashtag. Um, I have just found that when I use things like social media strategists, I get other social media strategists or social media marketers following me. We're going to talk a lot about um, the right and wrong hashtags to use um, coming up soon. Um, share to your Instagram stories. Um, Instagram stories is, has been around for about three years now. You can share them to your Facebook stories as well. Um, and the stats are showing that when it comes to Facebook stories, more people are looking at the Facebook stories than the Facebook newsfeed now. Um, and I'll be interested to hear um, social media marketing world that I go to every year. It's a big study about December on this and they reveal the results. And last year it was that the stories in Facebook were overtaking um, the Facebook newsfeed, um, which is exactly why you want to connect your Instagram stories to your Facebook stories and decide if your the business route is the way to go or the creator account is the way to go. Um, just some basic practices for um, some more basic practices, best practices. You want to add value, tell stories, and amplify any posts that sell. Um, what I mean by that is if you have the budget to do Facebook advertising or Instagram advertising, do it. It is inexpensive right now. I have a client that's paying 10 cents a click for um, a, her spa service. Um, she's running a short video. It doesn't cost much to get eyeballs on um, your website through Instagram and Facebook. If you're telling a story, just make sure that if you're doing this in Instagram stories or if you're even doing this in the newsfeed, make sure that you have the basic elements of the beginning, middle, and end, but also keep it short and sweet. Um, I used to go on for three minutes on my Instagram stories, and now I, after a lot of practice in two years, two and a half years using the tool, um, I can get my point down usually to about a minute. Um, I also do... If, if there's a point I'm trying to get across and I feel like I'm going to ramble, I'll grab a notebook or a little piece of paper and uh, write down some points so I stay on track. Um, I just notice a lot of people, when they do their stories, will ramble on a little bit. Um, the other thing about Instagram stories, and I'll show, show you this uh, when we get to like the live run through of it, um, I also um, really encourage you that if you are talking to at least put some subtext in there and I'll show you how to do that when we get there. Um, make sure you always end with a call to action um, in any content you do. Um, today I was talking about um, like not being ready for things. Um, the whole point of it was we were talking about if you're not uncomfortable, you're not, you're doing something wrong. And I'm at a crossroads in my business. And I just said that I can either stay comfortable and keep things going, or I can add another element like a digital course. And then I asked like, have you ever run across this roadblock in your business that you, things are so comfortable, yada, yada, yada. And people are commenting on that right now. Um, when you uh, make sure you end with the call to action to get some engagement. Um, always try to put the comments in the caption if you can. It is preferred by Instagram and the algorithm, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that you put them in the caption. Um, the only time I put um, the hashtags in the um, comments are when I run out of room in the caption. So we'll cover that a little, little long line. You'll notice that I will reiterate things throughout this presentation, mainly because you only retain about 10% and I like to refer back and remind people. And a lot of times engagement and hashtags and stories all intermix and um, it's good to bring it back up again. Um, some best, po best practices for cross-posting. Um, if you cross-post from Instagram to Facebook, um, one thing I do say is go back in and um, take out the hashtags um, and make sure that if you're referencing a link, some, a lot of people will say in an Instagram post, um, head over to the link in profile. If you're sending this to Facebook, you can actually put the link in Facebook. So, um, that's just a, that's just a thing that I will see other businesses do. They will send from Instagram to Facebook, 
and they will be referencing a link, but there's no link. Um, so just make sure that if you're going to be cross posting from Instagram to Facebook that you um, reformat and reference links. Um, as I said before, send your Instagram stories to Facebook stories and send your IGTVs to Facebook too. I'm not going to really get into much of IGTV today. Um, I could do that a live in the live demonstration. Just know that um, you can also put those, um, take your um, things like Facebook Live and Instagram Live and you can load them up to YouTube as well. And that's a um, hot tip I like to say because YouTube is searchable and YouTube is also the second largest search engine. So make sure that whatever you're putting on IGTV and Facebook Live and Instagram Live, you can download and upload to YouTube. Um, it's one of those tricks that Gary Vaynerchuk um, talks about when repurposing content. So I'm gonna um, stop right here and I'm gonna look at the questions and I'm gonna go through um, to see, okay, which ones are new? Okay, so the new one is still science from creator type of interest. You do get, um, you do get your insights from um, the creator side of Instagram. Um, does tagging yourself count halfway as a call to action? <laughs> you gotta, I'm reading your question. I tend to forget the call to action, but I always tag to make it easier to click to my profile. That's a good suggestion, Greta. Um, you, you only can tag 20 people. So a lot of times, um, a lot of social media folks like myself, um, we tag each other in our posts because we are trying to generate some engagement. Um, and uh, so that's a good, that's a good hot tip. I wouldn't say not to do that. If it's working for you, uh, work for you. Um, profile clicks are, um, it's a kind of a misnomer about the profile clicks. Um, we just assume that everybody's looking at our profile, but I would say that about 2% um, look at our profile on a regular basis. Um, I did a, I did a Instagram stories um, research on this where I asked, that question, like how many of you are clicking people's profiles? And it ended up being about 3% were saying they click through people's profiles on a regular basis. The other one that I did do some testing on was I asked how many people are looking at the tagged um, section of your Instagram feed. And I'm gonna pull up um, my phone live in just a second and show you what I'm talking about. Um, and nobody really looks at the tagged posts on Instagram um, stories, or Instagram, your Instagram feed. So I'm gonna share my phone really quick tools. Um, while, you're setting, while you're setting that up, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, um, you, you talked about testing it out to see if you wanna have a business or if you wanna have the creator. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something that if I already have mine listed as a business, can I just, change it to a creator or do I have to start all over again? No, you can change it. You can okay. Change and it could I change want. back when, okay. So you can go back and forth, um, to see yeah. which one's best for you. Yeah. Okay. So notice at the top here, you guys can see, hopefully you can see my phone where it says Shannon Lee strategy. And, um, and sorry if I'm not looking at the camera, my, I have dual screens and my, my iPhone doesn't show up on the main screen. It shows on my other screen. Um, see where it says like Shannon Lee strategy and says 98 profile visits in the last, um, seven days. That's kind of the clue of how many people are coming to your profile. Um, so, and then the one thing that Greta was suggesting was, um, tagging herself in the picture. Um, the tag part is, and I'm going to slowly navigate you guys there. But see where it says, see where my images start and there's a grid and then there's a TV with a squiggle line and then there's a picture of a person that, that um, looks like a tag. I see it. Um, yes. Yeah. So that is uh, where your tagged photos show up. And so Greta, if you do do that, just know you're going to have a sea of tags that are identical to your grid, mm -hmm. but that's not a bad suggestion. Um, I had somebody really irritated that I was tagging them in my post, though I thought it was okay to be tagging them. Um, 
And they were like, well, hey, I don't like that because you're showing, all your photos are showing in my tagged area. And I was just like, well, I don't, I, really the tagged area is for us to look at. So people look at the tag, tag area and then I did a survey. Like, How many people look at the tagged area? And people were like, I don't look at the tag area. So it was kind of like a, a good, um, it was a good indication that people weren't really looking at it for me. Um, so I just kind of was like, hmm, well, I don't notice people are doing that. So. And what's yeah. that TV with the squiggle? What's that? that that's IGTV. Okay. Yeah. And this is um, IGTV. You have to load into it from a separate app, um, your videos. Um, but that is what my IGTV looks like. And I purposely leave them black because um, I want variety in my grid. And here's my current grid right now. Um, as you can see, um, I do usually a video, photo, graphic, video, photographic. Um, that's not on purpose. That's just how things have been going with me lately. Um, but this is, your, this is your feed right here, your profile and your feed. Um, and if you want to look at everybody else's feed, um, you just click the little home button on the bottom. We're going to go through um, the, the, like this anatomy right here of, of Instagram in just a second. I um, just want to, I just saw a I, question come through. I, sorry, I didn't really clarify on my question. Um, I wrote it while you were still talking about stories. Oh, okay. So you, okay, now I'm looking at it. I meant the tags and the stories though. Um, that's a, that's a good, that's a good suggestion. It's not something I've thought about doing. Um, you can, people can easily get back to your stories by um, click or your profile. Hold on. By clicking the, if it'll show up, the top left. Hold on. And see, they changed things over the last uh, week. Let me see. So it used to let you go um, by clicking your profile at the top left and it doesn't let you do that anymore. So um, that's a good suggestion. Um, that's just that one that I've thought about doing. And there's this thing I say, you do you, if you've seen me teach before, um, you do what works for you. If you feel that people are going back to your profile that way, um, that's a great suggestion. Is the reason you're getting people to go back to your profile to hit a link or are you getting them to go to your profile just to go to your profile? Um, generally just to go to my profile because I've seen that I, I'm getting a lot of hits from discovery from people that don't follow me. Okay. That's a good suggestion. So, um, let me, is area, kind of go over the anatomy of what Instagram is the Instagram feed is really quick. Um, the top, it's hard to explain these things. So I'm going to try to go as slow as possible. The top, well, and, and real uh, quick, left. Shannon, are they able to, uh, can, can you watching, can you see my cursor? So if I, are you able to see my cursor? Because when you yeah. say something, I can circle it. Okay. All right. That yeah, doesn't help it won't, then. It won't go on. It won't do it that way. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, I, so I used to do this for, I used to have slide up and, um, and I do have them and I can still show you guys that way. Um, Instagram just kept changing things every month and to update the slides. I was like, it's just easier to, it's just faster to do this live. Um, so how I'm going to do this is actually what I'm going to do. I Welcome. think like you were doing top, you know, like you were telling yeah. us top or bottom left, right? Yep. Well, we're going to, until it starts to change, I have some slides I can show you, but um, to get into Instagram stories, since we're kind of going there right now, Instagram stories is 15 seconds of video. They disappear after 24 hours. You can save them to highlights and we'll talk about that towards the end. Um, also, if you are not doing Instagram stories and you don't know where to start, um, at the end, I will tell you where to go to get a, a download that I have. It's on my website. Um, the first place I tell people to start is to just spend 15 minutes a day viewing Instagram stories. 
follow three competitors that you like what they're doing and, and figure out how you can do it differently. And somebody said, well, that's not exactly an original idea. I'm like, well, that's how we learn how to do things. We yeah. watch other people and then we think, huh, that's how I do it. So I'm going to go back to my phone really quick and then I'm going to kind of show you guys the, um, some slides that I did um, on this. But here is kind of how you get to Instagram stories. And it's how we get there is the top left, there's a camera, very top left above your, where it says your story, you click on that and you're going to see me. It's like a, it's like a thing. And this is uh, what Instagram stories looks like on the back end, and I'm kind of toggling through a couple of things. Um, but the back end is completely changed now. Um, up here at the top left are um, controls uh, for Instagram stories. You can um, hide people from your stories. You can only send to close friends. Um, you can show to everyone, only to people you follow. Um, you can save them to your phone if you'd like every single story to be saved to your phone. I don't suggest that. But what I do suggest is putting the save to archive on. Um, and then um, you can allow resharing to stories. Um, also, uh, you can allow sharing to messages too there. So that top left is the controls. The middle there is, the middle top is the flash. You want the flash off or on. And the little X to the right is to exit out. So we'll go back in by clicking that top left, um, top left tool, and I'm making sure I go through everything on my list, you guys, so you know. Um, so let's uh, take a picture of me. I'm going to take a picture of you. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go through some more, and sorry for the cheesy picture, but this is for demo purposes. And... Um, I caught the tail end of the last speaker where she, and Jules, you were talking about makeup and yes. how you don't wear a lot of makeup and you felt like, okay, so I'm one of those people that doesn't wear a lot of makeup and I don't compromise when I go, when I go live, unless I'm getting like professional pictures taken or I don't compromise for Instagram stories or lives. It's what you see is what you get. So you're getting me today in, in a sweatshirt and with a little makeup on. <laughs> you do you is what I always say. Okay, so the top left is the exit button if you want to exit out. And then the arrow pointing down at the top is to download. Um, you can download this, that picture to your phone. Um, the little link links to IGTV. So you can um, post a picture or a video that talks about your IGTV video and it will link over to IGTV. Um, the little smiley face, little page turn thing is what we call the sticker button. And this mm -hmm. is where um, there are tons of tools. There's a location tool in there. Um, that is great for reach. Um, you can, I'm going to load this up with stickers, guys. Um, <laughs> you're going to love this. So this sticker tool helps your reach. If you want more eyeballs and more followers, put the um, lovely uh, location tool, the location, um, geolocation sticker in there. The next one is the at mention. So we'll put, I'll put Chicks Connect. So say uh, this is about Chicks Connect. Why is it, there she is. Um, so we'll put that in there as well. That is to mention somebody. And that's where Greta was saying she was using the men mention sticker to refer back to her profile. And can you change um, the color or no? The color yeah, has you to can. stay the same. Oh. Yeah, you can change it by clicking. I'm, that is one thing I always forget to show people is on this location sticker and on the mention sticker and on the hashtag sticker, you can click them to change colors. And there's three colors, gray, um, rainbow, rainbow, and then kind of like that Instagram gradient is what I call it. So I'm going to show you a fun trick in just a second. And then you can add a hashtag. Like geolocations, hashtags give you more reach. So you want to use a hashtag if you want more reach. So let's go girl gang as our hashtag. Um, and then same with the other, the mention sticker and the geolocation sticker. You can the uh, colors slightly. They don't give you much room. All right. 
Another thing you can do is you can add a GIF. And so we're going to put girl power or something like that in there. We'll put, I don't know, we'll use this lovely gal. So, what, so I'm going to show you a fun trick. If you like clean Instagram stories with not a lot of uh, hashtags, geolocations, or mention stickers showing, you can um, expand them by taking your fingers and move them in and out hmm. um, and pinch them and you can make them super small. This is just a personal preference. You don't have to do this. You can make them small, like put them in a corner and then hide them with a the hashtag. This is if you don't want a lot of clutter on your Instagram stories. And this is actually kind of like an Instagram 2.0 kind of thing. Um, after you get going on your stories, this is something that a lot of people will start doing is to hide their stickers and things like that um, to make it more aesthetically pleasing. Um, okay, so where were we? You can add music. Not everybody has the music capability and I'm not gonna blare you with music right now, but um, you can add music to your, uh, to your story. Um, you just find something that you want. I sometimes put Beyonce on there. Um, the one thing I will say about using music is if you tag somebody in the, in the story, you can't, they won't be able to share it. So, um, so if you use music and you tag somebody, they won't be able to reshare because yeah. music is in there. And my guess is it has to do with the rights when it comes to music. Um, so not everybody has music, um, and I don't exactly know why people do and do not have music. Um, you can also put the time on there, and you just click it, and you get different um, you get different clocks. Do you don't use this one that much? <clears throat> There's also polls. I used this one today, and I'll show you. Uh, I did it today on purpose, so you guys could see how I used it in my stories. But you can ask a question. Um, and you can use that to get market research. So today I asked, um, are you over 35, a mom, a small business owner who struggles with, um, that has the social media basics down, but struggle with your website and your content answer. Yes. And I'll show you, um, in the engagement portion as well, how to use those to your advantage. So you can do some, um, I'm going to delete that and I'll show you how to delete that again. I just realized I didn't show you how to delete. Um, as I told you, this is very much live and on the fly, how I like to, how, let's say, like I had to, like I had to, like showing you how to do it is like I have, I can't talk. So <laughs> I've got you. <laughs> you got me. I follow you. Can you. Also, <laughs> you can also ask questions like, are you in Chicks Connect? If I can spell connect. Or connect. Um, <laughs> and people can go, yes. Or do you want to learn more about Chicks Connect? Um, and you could recruit members this way. Um, so you could use this um, question sticker for that. Um, if you want to delete it out, you just hold, you just grab, it will float around with your finger and you just dr drop it in the trash can. Um, okay, so, other so if you do a, um, a picture and you put one of those um, things kind of over your face, that that's... That's something I could do, right? Like if yeah, I'm not totally too pleased with my picture, I can put one of these stickers over my face. Yeah, you could. You could go like okay. this. Like, oh, here's a selfie with my picture with a sticker over my face. Okay. I um, like you go like this. My son likes to use this one often. You can put your you can put oh yeah. Your gift. There's like the the creativity is like limitless in here. Like there's so much you can do. Um, uh, other things that you can use in here is a countdown sticker. So let's just say like Black Friday. Mm. And say you're having a Black Friday special. Um, and that is like November 28th, I think. Uh, and you put this in on your story and say, talking about your Black Friday special, they can click the Black Friday and get notified before it ends. And I'll show you because I clicked one the other day and it's ending today. I'll show you what it looks like on the end user side. But this is a great way to remind people of specials you're having 
um, using this like countdown sticker. Is that really, is it 11, is it one month, 11 days, 11 hours? That was weird. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a month away. Yeah. So I was just looking right now. Um, oh, some other things back in here, and I'm not going to go through every one of these, but there's a quiz sticker you can use. There's this fun little slider. People like to put this one. You can say, uh, who likes kombucha? And you can change the little emoji. The, you know how it's a little heart with the guy? You can go in here and find something that's more appropriate, like kombucha. We'll do like uh, wine would be the closest thing. Well, actually, I'll do grapes. Um, you can make great kombucha. And you can uh, put that there, and people can vote in, in there. Um, you see, it's just a lot of fun. It's way more fun than Snapchat. Remember Snapchat? <laughs> or who uses Snapchat? This one um, is fun, and this will be the last one I'll kind of show you in here. Is see the, the camera with the gray around it? Mm -hmm. um, I'll show you what that does. You can move it around, and you can put, like, a picture, take a selfie, and like superimpose another picture of you in there, which I don't use that one very often, but that's kind of a fun one. Okay, so you were saying that you didn't like the way you looked and you wanted to change something about it. Well, we're gonna talk kind of about two sets of filters next. Well, we're gonna talk about the first set of filters and then we'll get to some other filters in just a second, but you can swipe left and see how things are changing and put a different a filter on that way. Left or right, um, we'll bring up all the filters. I like to use the New York filter. Um, where is it at? I use the New York filter. Um, it's my on-brand filter. That's something down the road if you get into stories um, and you wanna use the same filter for everything, that's what I suggest that you do. So that's kind of the filter, the first part of filters. There's way more filters we're gonna to get to in just a second. Um, so next to the little sticker button, we go to the sound. You can turn the sound off or on there. And then next to the sound button at the top is a, um, the markers. Um, and there's different, as you can see, different markers at the top. Um, I'm just gonna click that top left one. And at the bottom, um, you have different color markers to choose from. You can also, there's a dropper on the bottom left. Um, click that and you can pick colors from your, um, okay. from there. The other thing you could do is I do this often is I will take a picture of something and I'll want to use a custom color. Um, you hit the dot, you just tap, um, you tap the dot and then you kind of hold it down and it will color the whole thing. Um, that's if you want to bring in a custom color and use a custom type background. We're going to get the types in just a second, but I like to show people that fun little hack. So that is, um, there's different markers. Um, there's also an erase tool too. Um, there's a thin marker, a thicker marker, a neon marker. Those are at the top here and then you can erase as well. Are you just doing that with your mouse? I'm doing it with my finger. Your finger? Okay, because you have a touch screen? Yep. It's okay. not, this is your phone, so you have to do everything on your phone. Oh, okay. Yep. So, okay, so where are we next? I'm going to hit done. Uh, the, la the last part at the top, and then we're going to go to the bottom of Instagram in just a second. Instagram stories. Um, and like I said, very tactical tips today. Um, this is where you can add text and um, you hit that little text tool and you have several options. Um, you can, like I just showed you, you can customize the color of the text you want to use. So several different fonts, there's the strong font. Um, so I'm gonna just put fonts there. Um, and you toggle by hitting, see where it says strong. If you want the next set of fonts, it will be classic. And then the next one is modern and then the next one is neon and the last what one do you is, mean by toggle is that a swipe or what is a toggle you just um how you're going to do it is see at the top how it's the type is changing from it says typewriter right uh, strong you just tap that with your finger you tap okay you tap it yeah. tapping you is tap. toggling okay yeah tapping toggling same thing tap it <laughs> okay. tap it tap it tap it tap so that then, 
Yeah, tap that app. Um, another thing is you will see um, on certain fonts, not the modern font, not the neon font, but the typewriter font, and I believe the straw, the typewriter font and the classic font have um, more capabilities on the top left. You can justify like middle, left, right, middle. You could also color it in by clicking that A um, that's right next to the mm -hmm. line. And you can um, also make it transparent too. Um, I'm gonna show you a little trick in just a second using this. Um, see how it's transparent? You can also make a filter and color filter. As you hit a period and you hit done, and then you kind of grab it with your fingers and you can make like a blue filter or whatever color oh. filter you want on the photo. Yeah, it's kind of fun. So, so that's the, the type setting. Um, I just suggest playing around with these because um, even though you're watching me do this, um, you'll be like, how'd she, how'd she do that? Um, <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> where you started. <laughs> you well, know, the show, I, when we get done with this, take me back to the very first button. <laughs> yep. So we're going to do that right now. So okay. Funny. Okay. So we're going to discard this video by hitting the top left X. So I'm going to discard and I'm going to take another picture. So actually we're going to go live in here. So now we're talking about what's in the bottom. Um, and we're going to Ta not, uh, not exactly tap, but we're going to slide. So at the bot, they just changed all this in the last week, you guys. And I didn't update the slides because honestly, it would just be faster to go through this live with you. Um, so when you open up Instagram is to do a story. You remember you go to the top left, the little, um, camera, and then there's me. Okay. Yay. And then at the bottom, um, there's several things that we're going to go over. You can go live in Instagram. You guys just did a whole, had a whole live segment segment about that. Um, you can go live and if it's over under 10 minutes, you can save it at the very end. It will give you a thing to save it. We're not really going to talk about live today. Um, so see where it says live. Then you want to slide to where it says create mm -hmm. you can, and here, um, type out. <clears throat> type out and you can just like the type tool we use on the other area you can also change it that way um, at the top where you toggle with the fonts you can also um, oh that's not what I wanted to do uh, we'll make this I'm gonna make it white again um, the other thing you can do is you can oh it's not letting me do it see this is why we are I'm doing this live. Um, let me go back. So the create button, you can create like just in graphics with Instagram. Um, so I'm going to exit out and I'm going to show you the next thing that's new is they have this templates thing in there. Um, this is kind of cool. If you hit the dice at the top, it changes it. And you could use these fun templates inside of the type tool. Um, these are from last week. I didn't get these till um, today's Wednesday till like Sunday. So um, I was kind of jazzed about that. At the same time, like, oh, my slides are obsolete. Um, you can also um, put a countdown this way in that create button. You can also see what happened this time last year and it will pull it in. Oh, cool. So there's me. Yeah. And then um, you can ask a quiz. So this is another option. Instead of using that sticker, mm -hmm. you can um, go into the create and do several things. Ask a question. Um, I asked a question the other day and it pulled in the last three um, responses that I had um, from it. So I'm gonna, um, so that's the create button. I'm going to hit the exit button. Um, you can also bring in photos from your camera. Um, that bottom left is an area to do that. So as you can see, I can pull in this photo from my client and um, use the type tool, type tool to say something like today at the... Now, did you turn that picture sideways a little bit? Yep. Oh, see, this is the beauty of having you here with me. Um, <laughs> you can... 
you can make it bigger, smaller. You're doing that with your fingers again, yeah, like the finger. pinch yeah. in. Okay. Yeah, the pinch. Yeah, you can't see my fingers. You can kind of see me if I do it like that. You can see me on camera. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you just okay. pinch it. So um, normal is what it will mostly drop on. Um, there's also in the normal mode, this, we're just in the create now, we're into normal. Um, here's all the filters. Um, there are lots of filters in here. Um, I didn't mean to do that. Um, this is the other area of filters where everybody plays with. This is the place where your background will look all pretty. It also smooths your face too a little bit. Um, but these filters are all new in the last week. This is my favorite. Um, but there's lots of filters in there to play around with. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I just want you to be aware that there's filters under this normal button. And I'll go okay. Back. They're to the they're to the right, and you just toggle them through. And somebody told me there is a bunch at the end where you can add more filters in. So um, filter away if that's if if that's what you do. Um, the next area is the boomerang. And um, the boomerang is that fun motion video that takes about three seconds of your uh, video like this. That's a boomerang. Um, my, I'm trying to like, do I have a way to show you guys? Hold on, I'm gonna flip my camera around. Flip your camera around is the bottom right button. So here's my desk. I'm going to kind of give you a close up of my desk. Those are, um, <laughs> those are uh, CBD gummies right there in that little dish that my client dropped off for me to photograph. Um, a boomerang is um, about five seconds of video and it's just a quick movement. Um, it's an Instagram kind of app kind of thing. All right, so I'm gonna turn this around. Um, and then there's super zoom. Uh, I just encourage you guys to play with all these. Um, super Zoom. <laughs> so that's a Super Zoom. There are plenty of filters in there. There's the heart. There's the on fire. There's the sad. I think it's just called Nope. That's not doing it. Not doing anything, you guys. That's the sad filter. So, or the sad super zoom. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of the super zooms, but you can play around with them. Um, Hands-free, if you wanna record a video hands-free, you just hold the button down and it will give you three seconds. Nope, oh, did we lose her? I wonder if it was too taxing on the uh, recording or something. Maybe she's still there somewhere. All right, well, I definitely cannot pick up the uh, reins here. I do have um, three Instagram accounts. And I, again, like in everything I'm doing, I'm just kind of throwing it out there to see what sticks and I kind of spread myself too thin all across. Um, but we'll just wait till she pops back on. But I do have one for Chicks Connect. I also have one, and it's just Chicks Connect, you know, all in one word. I have one um, called Jules Muller, and then I have one Pickleball Fun Hub. So I was just filling in with my Instagram accounts while you, uh, I think maybe it was too taxing having you video while you're doing a video maybe, but you fell off. So welcome back. And uh, I have to unmute you. I can't hear you, hon. There we oh. go. My we internet got, dropped. Yes, we have you now. It was getting <laughs> so a little that, choppy, so I think maybe it was, it was too uh, taxing with the video on top of the video or something. Yeah, um, I will tell you that um, my internet dropped, so um, that's what happened. Um, but our, we don't have the best internet in Bend. Okay, <laughs> so that was actually the end of the Instagram stories part, and so I wondered if anybody had any questions, because this is usually where people are like, 
oh my God, that's a lot. And I will say that it takes time and playing around and patience. I would say do not give up on Instagram stories. This is, this is kind of the wave of the future when it comes to social media. And I just want to say that um, I'm here to support you and you can watch me on um, Instagram stories to kind of get some inspiration. Um, but it's, it takes time and practice just like just about anything time and consistency and just not giving up on it. Can I take a picture of you for yeah. one? I'll try one, two, three. Okay. <laughs> and um, so that's just what I would say. I do have, um, if you go to shannonleestrategy.com, a pop-up that will pop up that will give you, um, you can go sign up for it. Um, it's Instagram stories, ideas, tips and tricks. And so it will give you 15 ideas to get moving when it comes to Instagram stories. It will give you prompts to use every day. Um, and this has been helpful with a lot of my coaching clients and I've done free challenges with Instagram stories as well. In fact, um, my coach told me that, um, cause I wanted to do another one and she's just like, um, she actually feels like my strength is Instagram stories, but at the same time, everybody seems to be doing Instagram stories challenges. So maybe it's a chicks connect challenge where as chicks, we really focus on, for a month really getting um, active on Instagram stories and we do it within our community. Um, I think that because, would be great. That yeah, would get I would a be lot of people motivated. I would be happy to lead that. So if you want to get the tips and tricks and I'm going to show you my screen really quick, what the tips and tricks looks like. Um, let me pull it in. Could you? It is a, uh, it's a two sheeter with some tips and tricks and story ideas for you guys to get moving when it comes to Instagram stories. Could you repeat the source? Oh yeah. Hold on. Actually, let me do this. Let me drop it in the, in the chat. Do, do. So go here. Oh no, I don't. To sign up in the chat, shannonleestrategy.com. Actually go here. Shannonleestrategy.com. Okay. My pop-up is not going to pop up because um, I've disabled it for when I go to it. Um, but if you go here, it will pop up and you can sign up and it will send you um, that, that, um, those tips and tricks and ideas. So wonderful. Well, we are so lucky to have Shannon back to back. And so um, I know that there are a couple of other questions maybe. So um, we will just uh, keep it rolling, keep recording. Yep. And um, I'll have you take a peek at the, can you see the chat box so that you yeah. can read those questions, make sure you answered all of those. And then um, I had a question as far as transferring um, one of my accounts from a business account to a, uh, an influencer account. Let's say I have three Instagram accounts, which I do. Um, can I have them all be creators and all the information go to my Facebook uh, personal, um, stories. Yeah. Okay. I, I would, I will tell you, I did some extensive testing on this and I have found as influencers, Jules, um, I'm, cause I consider myself more of an influencer than, I mean, I make money teaching people and helping businesses with their strategy, but I have found that more people are seeing my Instagram stories through Facebook stories now. I mean, more people are watching it rather than sending it to my business page. Mm -hmm. um, I still put content on my business page, um, but I found with the stories, it's been more effective if I've, by switching that creator account. And I just did that. I've done it. I've actually went, I had a business account and I switched to creator account and then I went back and then I switched again um, because I was doing a lot of testing. So you can do that. You won't lose anything. Mm -hmm. um, you won't lose any stats. Um, you'll still have the same insights. Just the only difference is it, people seem to have music when they switch to the creator account. Um, and it will go to your Facebook personal page. Right. Right. So awesome. I like that idea. So there weren't any questions. Greta okay. just said, Great tips. So we're going to get rolling on the hashtag part. Um, and I also have a download for this actually, the best thing for you guys to do is if you know how to take a screenshot, um, 
we could do that. Or I can also take a screenshot and post it in the Facebook group for you guys. But I also have downloads, um, other downloads I could send as well. Um, so let me think of a, a way to get those to you because I have a hashtag download and I also have an engagement download too in like marketing, an online marketing, quick little online marketing tips. Um, what I will do is I have them in a Google Drive and I'll pop them in the Facebook event and people can go there and mm -hmm. get those um, extras as well. Um, but what's a hashtag? So hashtag is basically like the pound sign. Um, we use this in Twitter to find things and I'll kind of go over, over an extensive like why we use hashtags and things like that. Um, it is one of the fastest ways to grow your Instagram account is using hashtags. Um, some best practices on hashtags are, and I'll get into more of the nuts and bolts in just a second, but the, some of the best practices are use up to 30. You can use up to 30. I have tested only using maybe 10 and then using 20 and using 30. And I have found the best reach is what I use every single hashtag. So between 20 and 30 is what I use right now. I have a set list, but I don't use them over and over. Um, I have what I call content buckets, which is a little bit more getting into the content development of your social media. Um, so I have Tip Tuesday. So I have specific hashtags for Tip Tuesday. I have um, my Friday struggles. So I have specific entrepreneurial hashtags I use. Um, so I always have a bucket of hashtags that I use, but I don't always use the same ones every day. I always try to use it in the, the caption of the post when possible. And we'll kind of go over that in a little bit. And testing is key. Not everything works for everybody. Um, but I did test that when you use between 20 and 30 hashtags, you get more of a reach on your post and therefore re more reach means sometimes more engagement, which may, which may mean new followers. Um, your hashtag hub is a place where you see everything that has to do with that hashtag. And I'm going to kind of go over the hub and hub real quickly. Um, at the top and how you see this is, um, you can see my cursor, correct? See this little search, see the little search button at the bottom. Um, that's what you will click to get into the hashtag hub. Um, but, uh, we're going to, going to go over kind of the, the hub of the hashtag. Um, the top is, um, the hashtag itself. Um, the little air, red arrow is pointing to the hashtag story. So the, that is the in bend hashtag stories. It's a great way to get eyeballs on your content. Um, that is the number of posts in that hashtag, 454,000 at this time. Um, these are related hashtags. Remember this, because we're gonna go back to this in just a second on when we are looking for hashtags. This is a great place to find them. Um, in the hashtag hub, there are the top posts and there's the most recent posts. This is just showing you the content that's in that hashtag and this is the top photo in that top post. So people often ask um, when I am building a hashtag bucket or when I'm building a list of hashtags to use um, on my posts, where do I start? So one of the areas I tell people to start is if you're a location-based business, um, use your location. So I live in Bend, so I put um, these Bend hashtags in my um, Instagram stories um, and my Instagram feed. You can really only put uh, one hashtag in a story. So um, going back to what I said, in your feed, you can put up to 30. In your story, you can only put one in there. Um, somebody told me there was a hack that you could use the text tool to put more hashtags. I've tried it. It doesn't work. Instagram knows, knows what's up. So they only allow you to use one hashtag in the story itself. So be careful or be, be selective on the story hashtag. But in your news feed, you can use up to 30. So um, I would say always use a location hashtag if you're location based. Um, my coaching business is um, worldwide, um, but I still put the bend hashtag in there. I actually put Pacific Northwest in there now. But um, you're, you're not limited to how many stories you can do though, right? So if you wanted to really get three hashtags out there, you could do three story posts, one with the, okay. Yeah, I like that. I didn't All think right. about that. Um, that's a good suggestion. See, I always learn things from other people. 
Um, that's a great suggestion. The next one you'll want to concentrate on is the product or service you offer. Also, I'm going to talk about categories in a little bit and cat categories and product and services kind of blur each other a little bit. But um, I always, right here, I would put um, people that I relate to or products that I, uh, like the people that my, who are my ideal clients are really like what I focus on in this area. Um, like I said, if I put social media marketing, um, I would get so many social media marketing strategists following back, which is, which isn't a problem because I actually do train social media managers, how to run business, successful businesses. Um, but I, I actually moved away from using that. So these are just some, you know, um, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a mom, um, I'm a mom who works. So I use those kind of for my product or service area. Um, I like to put emotions in, so that is something you want to use if you're talking about your struggles. I will put hustle or stressed or struggles or entrepreneurial life in there. Um, so emotion is a great thing to use. Um, if you're having a specific event, um, it's always great to have a hashtag in there. This is not one that you're going to use all the time, but if you're at an event and you want to use those event hashtags, um, use those in there to get more eyes and eyeballs on your content. Social media marketing world, um, that's theirs, SMW19. Um, the Bend Health Fair has a hashtag that they always use, so I like to use that one when I'm referencing something for there. The Mob Nation is very similar to Chicks. They're moms, mom-owned business. Um, I use the Chicks Connect in my every single post that I use. And if you're not looking at the Chicks Connect hashtag every day, you guys should. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. Um, categories, um, whatever you're talking about that day. Um, a lot of times I will talk about green beauty and I'll talk about craft beer. Um, I will put some of those hashtags in the post. Um, sometimes that mom life or the mompreneur life will fall in this category area or the entrepreneur life. Sometimes products and services for service-based businesses kind of blur a little bit. Um, and it will confuse people. In fact, I almost just said product services or category is, is one area. And then brand specific is another one. Um, I have a sp specific hashtag I use. It's called the Simplify Tribe. I always encourage anybody that is using my tips and tricks to use that hashtag. Um, Spanx um, is the lovely uh, Sarah Blakely's company. Um, if you're trying to capture the attention of her and it has to do, and you're wearing Spanx that day, tag Sarah Blakely's company in there and they may like it and reshare it. Um, so I like to talk about that last one again, developing a brand hashtag really quick. But actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back. Um, these are the areas of hashtags that um, I would take a screenshot, you guys. Um, though it's my little thing is showing up. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this for you. Um, this is kind of where I tell people, I give coaching clients homework when it comes to hashtags. And I'm gonna drop this in the event for you guys. Um, this is like your cheat sheet of when you are work, starting to work on hashtags, uh, where uh, areas to um, build your hashtags. Um, you want to develop a brand hashtag. Chips Connect is a great example, you guys. Um, it's a, it keeps your community all in one place. It keeps the conversation in one place. Jules can go look at it and use it as content. Um, make sure you ask permission. Um, I will, will reward my simplified tribers once a month by I'll choose one. I'll go on Instagram stories and say, hey, Jules is the Simplified Tribe hashtag waiter this month. I'm sending her a Starbucks gift card. Use that hashtag and I'll reward you. Something like that. Um, it builds authority. Um, I think I have 500 people using it. 500 people have used that hashtag. So it builds authority um, when it comes to your product or service. Um, so my ask to you guys is if you're using anything you learned today and you want to use the Simplified Tribe, go ahead and use it because I like seeing my action takers. Okay, so we're going to start with um, a few back. We're going to go back to this. So we're going to go back to you have the areas you want to focus on for your hashtags. 
Where do you go find them? Okay, so you're gonna go to, on your phone, the little, um, the, the hourglass button, and um, you're going to start looking for hashtags. Um, a good place to look at is, what are your competitors using for hashtags? Um, <clears throat> that is something that Sue Zimmerman, who is, was my coach, who kind of is a competitor of mine, she's like, look at the hashtags I'm using and see which ones you like. Um, type them in. So just say, let's say she's using InBend. Um, <clears throat> you'll look at these related hashtags and you'll get more ideas there. Obviously, Coeur d'Alene isn't a really good fit for Bend, Oregon, but Bend, Oregon and Central Oregon Life are. So I would write those down um, when I'm working on building my hashtag list. Um, looking at the related, I jumped ahead of myself. Stay away from popular hashtags. Um, I'm a big beer fan, though I just told you that I'm having issues with the gluten right now. Don't use the hashtag beer. Be more specific and use the craft beer hashtag. You'll get more eyeballs on it that way. You'll get lost in the beer hashtag, but in the craft beer one, um, say there's um, 10,000 people using it, and in the beer one, there's 1 million. You'll get a better reach if you use the lower numbered hashtag. If that makes sense to you guys. A lot of people start, will say, that doesn't make sense. And it's like, well, there's so many people using that popular hashtag. When you use a less popular one, um, you, set, you, t you tend to get more eyeballs on it. Um, so, so I'm on my, I'm looking at my phone. I see the name, you know, Chicks Connect up there. I see my posts, my following. Um, I see the search thing down here. And when I click on the search and type in, oh, I have to type in a hashtag, right? Not a word. I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to okay. go live on my phone. So you're going to go to the little hourglass at the bottom. So the little home button. Oh, the okay. home button. Okay. The home so button. Home. And then you hit the, the little hourglass. This, and it's this going search? to bring up. Yep. So. Um, ah, okay. Or, yep. So this is the discovery. This is what uh, Greta was talking about. This is the discovery area in Instagram. Um, itself you'll want to hit the search button and go you'll see there's accounts top accounts tags and places um i am going to put in in ben oh right there okay yep and then you'll see the related you can you can take your finger and look at all the related hashtags there um and you can if they fit use them so that is where you go. The other, and I'm going to show you this in the engagement part. The other place we'll talk about in a little bit is the places area. So just remember, we're going to come back and talk about places and how important that is too. I'm like so worried that we're going to run out of time, but we're going to get through <laughs> this. I don't want to blow through it, but at the same time, um, we are going to get through this. So um, usually when I do this talk with people, I will give them 10 minutes to brainstorm and I'm going to take a screen grab of this slide and drop this in the event. This is actually a cleaner slide, but this is what you will use to brainstorm your hashtags. So now we're going to get into the engagement part. Does anybody have any questions about hashtags before we go in? Um, you guys are so awesome. No I, like the, I like the idea of, um, you know, you talk about your buckets, I call it swipe copy, you know, so I'll just have stuff that I know I want to. So what she's talking about with the buckets or swipe copy is having all those hashtags on a notepad or on something so that you, you don't have to actually physically type them out each time. You can highlight, copy and paste. Yep. So I um, keep them in the, my, my phone, my phone notes, my iPhone notes. Um, the other thing that I do is I use an Instagram scheduler called Planoly, and you can save them in Planoly too. So um, my assistant and I, she loves the Planoly for just the hashtags part because we have for one client ten different hashtag buckets that we use that we've been mining over three years now. So, can you um, share the link to Planoly in the group as well when you think yeah, of it? Yeah, okay. I can go right now. Actually, I'll put it in here in the ch chat for you guys. Okay, so we're gonna talk about, if you guys don't have any questions, we're gonna talk about engagement. 
Um, engagement is the likes, the hearts, and it's the building the community. And a lot of people say that engagement is where the money is at. Um, there's two types of engagement, engagement to get followers and engagement to increase followers. And we're going to go over both today. And I'm going to give you ideas for both of these. Um, these are both dictated by the algorithm. Um, in order to get eyeballs on your content, you need to engage and Instagram loves the algorithm. And so to beat the algorithm is to engage with the algorithm. And we're going to, I'm going to give you engagement tactics today. Um, this is just basically saying, this is the definition of the algorithm. Um, basically just dictates the order of posts that users see your stuff. And it signals if somebody is interacting with your stuff, they will see your content first. Um, there are studies saying that as if you are engaging in the stories or watching stories, you will see that person's content in your stories. So if you're posting in stories, if you're, this is why stories are so important. If people are seeing your content, 300 people a day see my Instagram stories. Um, I have noticed a significant jump in the last year of my Instagram feed because of my Instagram stories engagement. So they kind of go hand in hand. Um, that's why doing Instagram stories is key. Um, the goal is to basically work with the algorithm to get the most engagement on your posts. You can use a lot of these engagement tactics that we're going to learn today on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook as well. Um, so here's some ways to optimize your engagement. Um, I like to use a question in the first sentence. Always end with a call to action. Um, I don't follow this third one often. I actually post when I want to post. I post in the morning. I don't post when Instagram tells me, which it says the best time I'm supposed to be posting is in the afternoon. I still post when I want to post. Um, you want to make sure your content is compelling using brand photos. We kind of discussed that like in the basics part. <clears throat> so where do you start when it comes to engagement? The explore tab. And that is when you click that hour but hourglass button, this is the first thing that pops up. So this is a good place for engagement is this is going to show you, uh, these are things that Instagram thinks that you like. My current one is showing pancakes. Um, somebody hollowing out a pickle. The reason why I'm not showing you it live is sometimes it shows some risque photos in there. Um, but this was that day. This is what, Instagram thought I was into seeing ice cream cones, um, carbohydrates. Apparently I was looking at a lot of, lot of uh, graphics that day about um, business and being an entrepreneur. So this is what Instagram thinks you want to see and they show you in your explore tab. The hashtag hub is a great place to um, engage with folks. So say I am looking to get more uh, Bend Oregon coaching clients. I will use the InBend hashtag and I will comment, like, uh, and find people to follow in that, in that hub. And I'm going to give, I'm going to go into more detail about this in just a second, but I wanted to touch on one way doing that. The places hub is a great place to interact. Um, I'm going to go live and show you guys something really quick with the, um, with the places hub. Um, my client is the DIY cave. They're a maker space here in Bend, Oregon. They are a physical location. So if I want to see what people are, um, what people are posting at that location, I will go to the little hourglass. The search button will come up and I'll go to the far, uh, top far right. And I'll put the DIY cave in there if I can spell. And this will bring up the DIY cave location and it will show you all the, the pictures that people tagged in that location um, by top photos and by recent photos. And you'll just look and um, see a great way to engage with people is to like the photo and um, comment. This is one of the owners of the DIY cave, otherwise I would comment. But um, if you're a physical location, um, if you have a physical location that people can tag, like and comment on these photos in the top and the recent. Um, I would suggest looking at this a couple times a week. I have a hotel client. We look at this every day for them and we engage with everybody 
in this area. Let me get back to my screen. Lots of toggling. Um, um, you want to uh, say that you are like me, I'm a bend business and I'm looking for more bend clients for my marketing business. Um, I would use the nbend hashtag and comment on businesses who I feel need some help with their social media. Um, you really want to just brands that align or your ideal clients are a great area. And then ideal client, I just kind of touched on that one. Brands that align or your ideal client, if you know hashtags or places that these people are hanging out, um, interact in those tags and places. And I'm gonna give you um, some, some parameters on what to do every day. So um, what do you need to do when it comes to engaging um, anywhere on social media? I always suggest people block out uh, 15 minutes a day to do this. Um, when I have done this, I have watched my follower counts. Like one month I had 500 new followers when I did this every day. Um, you want to engage, um, if you're going to use a hashtag, you'll want to engage in the top nine in the top recent posts. And so we kind of went through that. Um, maybe the best thing to do is show you guys on my live on my phone. I'll go back to my phone in just a second. So you'll put in the hashtag you want to engage with or the place you want to engage with. Um, and you'll put in, you know, the hashtag is say in bend or chicks connect. So that maybe this is a good exercise. Look at the chicks connect hashtag every day and like, and comment on the top nine and like, and comment on the most recent posts. Um, make that a habit that you do every day that you're connecting with the chicks on Instagram. Um, you can also go over to the places part and like I just showed you with the DIY cave and engage with places. Um, so say you're location specific, Bend, Oregon has its own geolocation. You can go there as well. And, um, if you're trying to get specific business in your backyard, go to your Portland, Oregon, your Salem, Oregon, your, um, Savannah, Georgia, wherever you're located and spend time in that place in the little explorer area. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk coined this, coined this the dollar 80 strategy, meaning you leave two cents on everybody's post that adds up to a dollar 80. I thought that was kind of cute. Um, this is the fastest way to grow your following. Um, and you can use this very similar, uh, very similarly on, um, you can use hashtags on LinkedIn. I don't know if you guys know that. You could do the same strategy on LinkedIn as well. Um, and I'm gonna open up to questions in just a second. Um, but here's some other ways to grow your following on social media and Instagram in particular. Host a giveaway. Um, just make sure you know the rules and that your giveaway aligns with your brand. Um, and also I would suggest putting a way to grab their email address too, um, because you want to be building your email list because social media is rented land is the last speaker kind of talked about. And we want to be building our email list uh, at all times if possible, um, because we can send um, emails out to those folks as well. And the open rates are way, way big, better than um, social media at times. Use Instagram stories consistently. When you are doing stories consistently, um, people are engaging with your stories, therefore your newsfeed content is showing up um, above other people's that aren't using stories. Um, partner with similar brands or partner with, with friends. Um, I like to do IG story takeovers. Jules, that'd be a great thing to do is have people take over the Chicks Connect IG stories every once in a while. Um, there's another networking group that I work with that does, um, you can sign up to take over the Instagram stories for a day. Um, there's just certain criteria you have to follow. Um, you could also dual broadcast. So Jules and I could go live on Instagram together. Um, that's a great way to partner and get other people's eyeballs on your um, content. Can you bring um, someone just, in like you can on the other apps? Yep, you can. Okay. On Instagram, on um, Instagram Live, you can bring somebody in, like with Facebook Live. And is that limited, uh, Instagram Live, in for time? 
I think it's an hour is all you get. It will cut off after an hour. Okay. Um, I had heard some people have more, can have, will have more than an hour, but I have only been, ha I've tested it and I've only been given 60 minutes. Okay. So it might be the bigger following you have, the, the better, longer it can um, the longer you get. Um, so these are just some other ways to grow your following, but the engagement, you guys, this here, right here is the, like the, the best way to grow your following. Um, and it takes about 15 minutes a day to do that. I have this fun little marketing checklist. I'm going to drop these into the group, but I have, um, these online marketing checklists that I developed, um, for my coaching clients that I now give to when I do webinars, basically what you should be doing quarterly, monthly, weekly. And then I have the daily checklist of what you should be doing daily. Um, when it comes to Instagram and engagement, I've added this in there and I've even gone into a little bit more depth. Like I will follow five, I'll pick three to five hashtags to spend 15 minutes a day in, 15 minutes a day in. I will also like follow five new people a day um, who are my ideal client. And I have that, I specifically know who that is in my head looking for. Um, and I will respond to every comment and the responding to every comment is key. Don't post and ghost is what I like to call it, because if you do that, people won't be able to, uh, if you post and ghost, you're not going to get engagement on your account. Um, when you are uh, interacting in the stories and you're interacting in hashtags and you're interacting in places and you're also interacting in your newsfeed, that will signal to other people that you're an active in Instagram user. So just make sure that you post and you don't just ghost. Uh, is kind of like what I like to say. Um, that's the end, Jules. I wanted to open it up to questions before I talked about more about what I do. Um, but um, does anybody have any questions? I, more than likely, you're overwhelmed. Uh, that's okay. This takes that was time. awesome. So much um, information. I loved it. I loved so it. much information. I actually teach this class live and bend a lot, and um, it's amazing to do it live. Um, live in person with people, but also it's amazing to do it like this as well. Um, and just know that this all takes time guys that, um, you just have to just spend that 10 minutes a day, just looking at stories and then start to dabble into stories. Um, some of you may not feel comfortable on camera. I really encourage you to get on camera. Um, you become more relatable. Nobody cares what you sound like, look like, um, if you're there offering value, your tribe will find you. Um, that's what I always tell folks uh, when it comes to Instagram stories or being live on video or doing video, that being on video just makes you more relatable. People hear you, they, they see your emotions. Um, and I just would suggest that you just give Instagram stories a try, um, send them over to your Facebook and things like that. So does anybody have any questions before I end, kind of end things? <clears throat> Let's see what's in the chat. I think yep, you posted so some links in the chat. Yep. Um, okay, and I um, I definitely want to change over my accounts to the influencer. So can you show us um, for those yeah. of us who have accounts if how we can do yep. that? I will show you how to do that. Let me just pull my phone up. Um, let me go uh, let me ask this too. How are you sharing your phone on your? Is that a i is that a Mac thing? It is a um, Mac thing with Zoom. Oh. So, yeah, it's a Mac thing with Zoom. Okay, so I do that, switch your account over. And sometimes they change it on me is the top right three little lines. You want to click on that. Mm -hmm. You'll go to settings. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll scroll down to see where it says account. And then at the bottom, so mine's already a creator account. You could switch, you'll switch there. It will say creator account. Okay. Um, and I don't want to switch. It says, uh, oh, it just says more growth tools, simplified messaging, flexible yep. profile controls. Okay, next. Yep. Yep. And it's very similar to. And then it wants a category. Yes. I actually entrepreneur. put. Entrepreneur. I put digital creator as mine. Um, okay. Entrepreneur, it would be a good one for you. Okay. So. Um, display, display. Okay. Yeah. So fool around with it. Um, I, like I said, I switched over 
So I did my original switch in May and then I switched it back in June because I didn't know if I liked it going to my personal. And then somebody gave, somebody had a really good point in saying like, you have more eyeballs on your personal Facebook than you do on your business Facebook page. And I was like, duh. And then I noticed like when I started talking about coaching and things like that, um, I always do this. I do mini trainings just about every day where I, where I will talk about something that I talked about in coaching or talked about, talk about a roadblock that a client of mine had. And I will try to be under a minute. I call them mini trainings. And I was sending those over to Facebook via the creator account um, to my personal. And I was noticing people were interacting with the messaging that way. Like they would have a question and they would ask me and it would show up in my Facebook messages. And I was like, huh? So um, I find that my personal page is now kind of turning into that business page of mine. So, um, so I would suggest as entrepreneurs to do that. Jules, let me know if you like doing that. Um, well, I think I would, I think I like the idea of all of them going to there. I've never had much success at all with a, what well, used to be called fan page, you yeah. know? Um, and I don't, I don't seem to get, notified when I get messages on the fan page. <coughs> it's just, I don't, um, it doesn't jive as well as groups do for me. And I, yeah. I'm starting to like Instagram and I'd like to use it more. Um, so Facebook and Instagram, and if I can tie them together to maximize um, and streamline, that was someone's word of the year. Oh, Ann Severs, one of our other speakers, um, just getting things streamlined is, um, you know, the way I like to do it too. So yeah. Yeah, I've just found um, when I really did my big push for my um, Simply Social and digital group that launched in September, it feels like it launched like years ago, but it just launched last month. I found I had way better success with the mini trainings when I sent them over to my personal page. And um, that not necessarily, I don't have the same group of people following me on Instagram as I do on Facebook. And I will tell you that my ideal client is more on Facebook than they are on Instagram. And so um, if you guys do like the tips and tricks you learned today, I actually have a dedicated Facebook group for this. And I know a lot of chicks are in that group mm -hmm. too. So I can, in our event, I'm going to drop a link, drop some links in there to things. Um, but I have found that uh, I was spending a lot of time on Instagram. I should be spending a little bit more time on Facebook. And it took my coach telling me that she's like, you gravitate to Instagram because you really like it. And I'm like, yeah, I do. It's, it's, I do like Instagram, but she was like, but your, but your ideal client is here. So, um, I, that's when I was like, okay, so I'm going to do the creator account and I'm going to send it over there. Yeah. Perfect. Here's a question or comment from Nancy, I think. Yes. Thank you for putting this together. Lots of good information, says Nancy. Yay. Yes. Well, thank you, Nancy. Um, I was just going to say that I think I already told you guys to go to use that Simplify Tribe hashtag um, yes. if you guys want to. Um, I don't have my screen up for you guys to see. And you know what? I already talked to you guys about what I do. You know I'm a coach and you know that I work with businesses. But um, if you use any of these tips and tricks, I would love for you to tag me in them and use my hashtag because I just really like sharing my gifts with the world. It's been my mission for two and a half years to really help women entrepreneurs become more comfortable online um, when it comes to their website and their social media. So, yeah. Well, and we appreciate you and all your valuable information. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, do you have any no other um, ways that we can support you? I know in um, tagging you and, uh, you know, posting a comment, maybe something that we all learned. Um, so if you're watching the replay of this, if you, you know, any point in time, um, if you could post on social media and tag Shannon um, and hashtag, let me ask you about the tagging. Um, like I'm really great with Chicks Connect um, members tagging me, um, you know, hashtagging things like that, but not necessarily just strangers without my permission. Um, <laughs> and so is there a, uh, a sense in the community of social media marketers, um, when it's okay, when it's not okay, things like that. So I, 
I had this, I had something happen a couple weeks ago that I kind of was like taken back about. Um, so among social media strategists, I have a group of people that we collaborate. Um, we have this, you know, community over um, competition thing amongst some of us. And a lot of us like collaborate together and we kind of tag each other in our posts. Um, and somehow somebody got tagged by accident and I didn't, I, I didn't realize I tagged this person by accident and they got, they were like, well, you tagged me in two of your pictures and I am, I'm not in the picture. And I was like, Oh, first off, it was an accident, but usually I use that as an engagement tactic. Um, I think I just missed a letter and the person she got tagged wrong in it. Um, but I will say, make sure there's an understanding when you're tagging people with my group of social media strategists, we all know we're going to tag each other. Mm -hmm. And um, that's okay. Tag people if they're in your pictures. If somebody doesn't want to be, if they don't like the way they look in the picture, they can go and untag themselves too. And the person will never know. But just make sure there's an understanding when somebody's, when you're tagging somebody that that's okay. Um, it just so happens that that person I tagged twice and they just were like, I'm a photographer and you're junking up my tagged photos and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, <laughs> first off, I'm sorry because I thought it, I was tagging somebody else in them, <laughs> but also people don't really look at the tagged part. We only look at that. Um, and I did some research on that. And like I said, I, I did a poll poll on it. Do you look at people's tagged photos? Um, the person was a photographer and I get, they didn't want ugly photos showing in their tagged areas. So gotcha. uh, I get that, but just make sure there's an understanding. It's an engagement tactic. Um, just make sure that everybody's okay with being tagged in the photos. Um, sometimes I see people tag brands that aren't relevant. I had a friend that was tagging a brewery and I was like, why are you tagging that brewery? She's like, well, I want them to see my stuff. So they'll hire me. I'm like, that is not how they're going to hire me. <laughs> that's not, that's not an engagement tactic I would use to be hired. I would like interact with their posts is what I would do and comment and follow their stories and engage with them that way to get their attention. So mm -hmm. that's what I would do. Great. So anything else that you'd like to share or that we could do to support you besides tagging and um, mentioning what you've done for us today? If you get stuck on social media stuff, I have an amazing Facebook group. A lot of chicks are already in there. Um, it's uh, Simplifying Social Media with Shannon. Um, I will drop the link in the event if that's okay, Jules. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, Anywhere. And I think I'm pretty sure you're in there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of other. I know uh, Lynette is in there. Um, but I try to go on a few times a week live, and I also try to also post relevant content. I also poll everybody and ask them what they want, what topics they want me to teach about, and then I'll sometimes do a free training. So I did hey. a free training last week about um, content, um, content planning and how to do some content planning, and I made it relevant for your website and social media. So it's kind of killing two birds with one stone. So I will drop the links to all the documents that I talked about today and on the Facebook group. And I would love for you guys to join me there. That's how you can support me. And I chicks connect is really supportive of me, even though I don't get to go to very many meetings. Um, the chicks have always been our lo my local chicks. And then um, I do have a few clients that are chicks too, that I coach, um, that I coach with. And so I'm just always supportive of you guys and I'm more than willing and happy to do any sorts of free training that you guys need. So. Yay. Aren't we so lucky to have you on board? We love it. We love it. And this uh, recording, like I said, if you're um, watching the replay, please connect with Shannon, follow Shannon. Um, anything that you learned today that you've implemented right away, make sure to tag her and thank her for her nuggets of information and amazing tips and tricks. Um, the part that I like uh, that, well, I'm going to be honest, the part I don't like, um, but I like that Shannon talks about it is the analytics part. Um, yeah. I don't know the first thing about any of that. And in the color scheme, when we've talked about that, that's all high blue in the color scheme that I talk about and share. And that is like my kryptonite. So at some point I will embrace 
analytics and understand, uh, it sounds like Shannon tests everything. So um, yeah, so if, you, uh, if you're like me and don't like the testing part, just take her advice because she's done the, she's done the numbers. She has done the testing part. <laughs> so we can uh, be so grateful to her for that. So thank you, thank you. Um, other people are saying thank you as well. Thank you, everybody. Um, and thank you. And uh, we'll go ahead and um, end our recording here and then stay tuned. You're more than welcome to stay online for our next speaker. Uh, again, I'm Jules Muller, founder and CEO of Chicks Connect. And if you want to learn more about Chicks Connect, um, you can follow the hashtag Chicks Connect, or you can also go to our website at chicksconnect.com and learn more about our organization and join us and be a host on um, or be one of our trainers on our upcoming um, summits like this. So I think we'll do these quite often and, and get our experts in our community out to the world. So we're excited about that. Well, thank you so much again, Shannon. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.